somebody breaking into it. If you're like I am, you got insurance on it anyway. I've been deep in debt with 40-something vehicles. We've had 50 now, I think it is. And here a couple of years ago, there was a storm coming up, and I went and got one of my vehicles I was deep in debt with and drove it under a big tree. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't think anybody would notice it, you know. And my brother come by right after I got out of it. He lives about a mile away from us. and He said, what are you trying to do, collect some money out of that vehicle out there? And I went and got it and pulled it back in the open. Amen. God's good, isn't he? Oh, my. That young man that gave that first word, that was good. <laughs> young man that done that this morning, that was good stuff. Man, they're going to make some fine preachers. As long as they endure. I said to Sister Grimsley, I, I hate to think about what they have to put up with. But what you go through is all about where you're going to. And it'll, you won't be disappointed when you get there. You know, no, nobody's going to land in heaven on rapture day and look around and go, is this it? A couple of rocking chairs and a porch. And... No, you're going to say it was, it was worth it all. You're not going to remember any of that stuff you went through anyway. I want to say again, thanks to the pastor. You've got a great pastor and a great first lady. They're good people. He's not doing the only thing in the ministry that he can do. He could have been at a hundred other places. But aren't you glad God sent him right here? And are you really happy that he stayed when the devil tried to run him off? How many is glad you stayed when the devil tried to run you off? Book of Matthew, chapter 8. Sister Grimsley, would you like to testify? Book of Matthew, chapter 8, verse 23 through 27. Nope. I started to preach that, but I changed my mind. I'm preaching on Romans chapter 16. Once they put the wrong verse up, and I just preached it anyway. So if I want to change my mind myself, I can do it. Romans 16 and 25. We may preach both of those sermons. You'll never know the difference. You'll never know when one starts and the other one stops. Is it on the screen? How about reading that 25th verse together? talk to you about Revelation. Not, not the book of Revelation, but the subject of Revelation. Let's pray. Father, thank you tonight for this great church, a great pastor, first lady, a good family here. It's such a wonderful feeling of your presence in this church. Thank you for the, thank you for the good singing a few moments ago. Thank you for the saints, Lord, that are coming together. For I feel like you're bringing your church together for some very special opportunities. I feel, Lord, that you are planting people in this church, planting them for a certain reason. Everybody say in Jesus' name, amen. The Lord bless you. You may be seated. I may at any moment while I'm preaching, or I may just start and not even preach, praying for people. Revelation. Everybody say revelation. revelation. It means, the word revelation means a lot of things, but one of the main things that it means is revelation is an uncovering. God does not keep Himself covered. He exposes His nature to His people. I mean, he's glad you've had a revelation of who Jesus is. 
Clap your hands if you have. Luke chapter 12 and verse 2. There is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be made known. Something is going on and people are doing little secret things, sometimes in the church. Sometimes out of the church. Some people are one way at church and another way at their home. You know it's the truth. I mean, we shake everybody's hand and I love you and get to the house and kick the dog. People have different natures about them when they're around other Christians. We, we're not supposed to let the world rub off on us. We're supposed to rub off on the world. How many wants more of the nature of God? Come on and clap your hands and say, give me the nature of God. And sometimes pastors and preachers are asked the question, who told you that about me? One pastor said to me, and I've had it said many times, but I remember one particular. said, Brother Grimes, I'm going to be in trouble when you leave. They're going to think I told you that. Because while I was preaching, I made mention of a plumber in the church. I don't know if we have one here, but don't try to pastor the church. Just keep plumbing. Amen. I thought I saw somebody in a uniform, looked like an officer's uniform. There it is right there. Amen. I don't know exactly what position, but I thought it took you till tonight to catch me when I got into town. I just wanted to tell you it was my wife driving, not me. Aren't you glad you can be a Christian and still laugh? I mean, you just got one of me to laugh at. I got a whole church out there. I believe it's going to be this new year is going to be a year of revelation. Things are not going to be hid from the church. God is going to pull the covering off of sin. So if you've been getting by, you're not going to get by anymore. And then people want to know, who told you that? What if I told you that God is a tattletale? What, what if I told you that God tells on people? Where could I prove it? I wouldn't preach it if I couldn't prove it. He revealed secrets to his servant. How many of you feel like you're a servant? Well, about ten of you. Do you know when you're really a servant? When you don't mind being treated like one. Come on now. I mean that phone rings at three o'clock in the morning. I used to pastor a few hundred people and that phone would ring. At 3 o'clock, and when I was young, it was, oh, my God. But what I didn't like to hear was this. This has been bothering me all day. <laughs> Think about it. And, honey, you waited to 2 o'clock in the morning? Give it another eight hours. We'll deal with it. That's the way I felt when I was young, but then I found out that I'm a servant. Leadership today has become the idea of finding a line of people and you go stand in front of them. That's what some people think leadership is. And that's nothing but blind leading the blind. You need leadership. This church is bound and destined, the word comes to me, to grow. All right. Do you believe God's got a destiny for this church? The devil has an idea of stopping this church. God has an idea of blessing this church. And you are the church. Are you ready for the destiny of God to be fulfilled in this sanctuary? Come on and shout and praise the Lord tonight. Yeah. 
on talking tonight about revelation. Sir, right there in the gray suit with the red shirt on and a tie that matches both of them, would you stand, please? Lift your hands. Don't stop dreaming. Don't. If this fits you, you ought to be shouting. Some people are wondering, what, what do they got? That man don't even know what that preacher's talking about. You watch, because he's going to start dreaming again. Some of his dreams have turned into nightmares, but don't you give up on them. God's still going to bring some things to pass in your life. He's going to heal you from the base of your neck, down your spine. If I'm a man of God, let it come to pass now. Come on. He's going to break your family from religious tradition. Shout the victory. And listen to this. Don't you turn around and go back where you came from. There's nothing back there. Your future is in the, in the present right now. He's a now God. Quit waiting for God to do it a year from now or two years from now. You're going to get up in the morning and say, my God is a now God. I said he's a now God. I said he's a now God. Go ahead and praise the Lord and worship Him. Come on. Come on, let's shout in the house tonight. Shout in the house tonight. Give the Lord a big shout. God's got a revelation for you. He is Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is a forever God. He's not a has-been or a used-to-be. He still is. He's your finisher. How many knows him as an author? How many knows him as the God that started you off? He's going to get you by the hand and take you across the finish line. I, you're not excited about that? I don't know how far it is to the finish line, but however far it is, I'm going to have the finisher standing right by my side, holding my hand, helping me. He's going to literally pull some of you across the finish line. Oh, get up and shout about it. Say amen. Come on and say it. Come on, finisher. Get a hold of my life. I want to finish that Sunday school class. I want to finish that singing. I want to finish writing that song. I want to finish that ministry that you started me off. He's the author and the finisher. Woo! Some of you white people shout. You know what color you are? I don't care what color I am. I got, I got that plain and simple. You won't need Webster to understand it. Ain't no skin going in. <laughs> Somebody say it. Come on, some of you white people say it. It's not about the color of your skin. It's about the color of your heart. believe in white power or black power. I believe in Jesus. One God, tongue talking, devil chasing, apostolic power over all the power of the devil. If you believe that, shout some. Woo! I like this pulpit. I like what I feel at this pulpit. I was in a pulpit one time that was about from here over here. And I started talking, and a big screen lit up and started saying what I was reading. Man, I didn't know if there were channels on there, if I could watch football or what. <laughs> I was looking where the knob was. It's not the size of that pulpit. It's the word coming across that pulpit. I don't know if you know it, but when you stand up here, you can tell there's been a powerful word coming across that pulpit. And if you rake it over on somebody else, it won't do you no good. But who you rake it over on might get a blessing. 
You ever seen some people and you knew and they knew that the preacher was preaching to them? And they were up there going, that's right, preach it. <laughs> like that makes a difference. Revelation. There's going to be revelation coming across this pulpit. And if you don't get in the Holy Ghost, you cannot receive spiritual revelation. I've had people shake my hand and I turn around and walk away and have a revelation of them sticking me in the back. I just turn around and tell them, why did you lie to me and shake my hand and tell me you love me? Because I just saw you sticking me in the back. Revelation. You don't make all kind of faces and expressions and you see some of those people want to call people out like that, like they're working in the gift. They're working in the pathetic. We got people working in the pathetic. That's when you go, hmm. Mm. God showing me something about you. Yeah, you got stomach trouble. You wouldn't be making a noise like that. <laughs> Brother, we're going to get in the Holy Ghost. It's not going to be about us. It's going to be about Him. Yeah. Revelation's coming to this church. Sin is not going to be able to hide in an apostolic church. Yeah. If you believe what I'm preaching to you right now, sin can hide in any church, but it cannot hide in a Jesus-manifested church. Come on and shout and praise the Lamb tonight. Come on and praise the Lord. Therefore, whatsoever you have spoken in darkness shall be revealed in the light. Whatever you're talking about in the closet is going to be shouted from the housetop. I was in a church just outside of Atlanta, Georgia one time, many years ago. And I knew that the pastor's wife of the church did not like me and did not believe in the gifts of the Spirit. So when she came in that night, her and her daughter a little bit late, I said, I'm going to prove something to you, woman. I'm going to tell you what you and your daughter talked about on the way to church. Tears started running down her face. She said, please don't tell it. I said, do you believe I know what it was? She said, yes, sir. <laughs> I was calling some people out one time, one right behind another, and I went to this one lady, and as I started to reach out and touch her hand and tell her something, she got up, ran over me, stepped on my feet. I suppose I'd been stepping on hers. And she ran down to the altar crying, I will never forget it. Don't let him tell nobody, God. Don't let him tell nobody. <laughs> to this day, I cannot remember what it was I was going to say to her. <laughs> Revelation is a real thing. But it doesn't do anything for you. Come on. Working in the gifts of the Spirit is not something that just builds you up. Right. It doesn't magnify you but it does something to the person you're ministering to. Because if you ever think it's about you, there goes your gift out the door. I don't know about you, but I like the young man that was leading the singing up here. I had a revelation that God sent him here to do just what he's doing. How many believes that God sent you here for a reason? And it wasn't to judge everybody that's doing something. Well, if I was him, you're not and never will be. Revelation. Revelation implies that that which is being disclosed was previously hidden. 
I walked in a church one time. It was my first time there. I preached, and as I was going back out the door, there was a woman sitting in the chair. She was about half the way back, middle of the building, and she said, you know, don't you? That's all she said. I mean, she looked as far as outward appearance like everybody else. Of course, the Bible warns us that wolves can put on sheep's clothes. And you know that don't fit in every organization. She said, every preacher that's ever been in this building... I have hid it from them. But you know I've got a devil, don't you? I said, yeah, and you know I got God too. She just kind of wormed in a snakish like way. There is revelation. And it cannot hide in sheep's clothing. Because there's a God while the church is looking at the clothing. There's a God that looks right into your soul and right into your spirit and right into your heart. You can't hide it in clothes. Because if we're not careful in Pentecost, we're going to come to a place where we are professional looking Pentecostal. Amen. A bum can dress up like a millionaire if you give him the right kind of clothes. Right. Right. Oh, but I got something over on the other side. Has anybody got anything on the other side? Yeah. Treasures there have I that all this world and all its wealth could never buy. And when I reach that city and the gates swing open wide, I'm going to find my greatest treasure over on the other side. All I want to hear is well done. You might like your meat raw, but I like it well done. I want it burn a little bit. Don't just set it on the fire. Throw it in the fire. I'll be glad when I'm on the other side of that gate. Now, you know, people in church, they're worried about what's coming out of the Bible. talks about the gates of hell. Gates are not threatening. But there's an army about to rise up, and we're no longer going to talk about what's coming out of the gates of hell. Hell's going to be talking about what's coming down to the gate. You, you didn't get that. You're not going to sit back in your house on Monday and wonder how many times the devil's going to come to you. You're going to get so full of the Holy Ghost. You're going to walk down to the gates of hell in the Holy Ghost and have a revelation. That gate is coming down. You're tired of being blessed on Sunday and being attacked on Monday. It's time to say, devil, you've been to my house. I'm going down to your house. Woo, somebody shout in here and praise the Lord. I had a vision here a while back about the gates of hell. I saw the hinges on the gate. I saw them rusty. I saw the hinges on the gates of hell and three bolts had already come out and each hinge only had one bolt left in it. Get ready, church. Hell's going to start worrying about us instead of us worrying... You're going to stop worrying what the devil's going to do to your family and the devil's going to worry what are you going to do to his party. Come on and shout and let's praise the Lamb. Go ahead. Let's spend about 15 seconds worshiping God. Go ahead. We are the Joshua generation. We've already left Egypt. Quit talking about, I don't have this or I don't do that. Let go of the gates of slavery and let's finish this thing. There's more to it than coming out. There's a going in part. 
quit struggling with coming out and let's get ready to get Jesus by the hand and let's go in to the promises of God. You can have that home, drive that car. You can have the blessings of God when you enter. Oh, go ahead and praise the Lord, son. Go ahead. Let's just pause a moment and worship the Lord. Come on, say it. Somebody shout it. Tell the Lord, I've already come out. I want to hear some of you say it. I've already left Egypt. I'm ready for the promises of God. This new year, I claim the promises of God. Come on, you're doing good. Go ahead and do that. Talk in tongues. Chase the devil off. Get in the Holy Ghost. Get a revelation of who Jesus is. Are you in the Bible, Brother Grimsley? Well, let's see Ephesians 1 and 17. That God may give unto you. Not loan. Not your brother or your sister, but give to you. The spirit of wisdom and revelation. You're not down praying going, Oh Lord, if it be thy will. Get a copy of his will if you don't know. <laughs> I've heard preachers go, and it sound, it just sounds so sweet sometimes. If it be thy will, sweet heavenly father. Know his will. You're his child. You're supposed to know his will. When my daddy was alive and I was a little boy and I didn't know his will, he helped me to understand his will. And he didn't tell me to shutty, shutty. He said, shut up, boy. I went to a part of Canada, New Brunswick, Canada. Used to go there and preach. That was the first time I ever heard the expression, shutty, shutty. I thought, what is that? I'd have walked right over my daddy if he'd have said, shut it, shut it. <laughs> he just looked at me and said, shut up, boy. I knew what that meant. Amen. Amen. Now, my mama, she was a she was a shutty, shutty type of woman. But not my daddy. And this new daddy I got. He don't make suggestions. If some of you's been hearing somebody talk to you and they've been making suggestions, I want to help you with that. That's not God. God don't make suggestions. He makes commandments. Like that storm in your family. Stop. Like that problem you've got. Be healed. God don't make suggestions to your mind. He is a commanding God. He is commander and chief. Revelation implies things being uncovered, a disclosure. The Bible teaches us that there were things like in the book of Revelation when they were written, they were not uncovered, but there would be a generation and there would be a day when they would be revealed. You ever heard people who got out of church saying, I just... I just couldn't get in that tonight. I felt the devil. My question has always been, when I talk to these people that felt the devil in church, are you the one that brought him? I'm almost sorry I said that. Almost, that was this morning. If there's a devil in here, somebody brought him. But I know what brought me. 
it wasn't no devil. I was talking in tongues before I got here, and I'll still be talking in tongues when I leave. Don't you wait till you get to church to get in the Holy Ghost. Get in the Holy Ghost in your home. Get in it in your car. Get in it on your job. They're not going to think you crazy. They're going to know you crazy. Next time somebody tells you you've lost your mind, say, you better believe it. I lost my mind, and I got the mind of Christ. I know he's a healer. I know he's a baptizer. I know he's a weight maker. Get rid of your carnal mind and carnality and step out into revelation and get the mind of God. When you lay your hand on somebody to pray for them, don't think it's God's will. No, it's God's will to heal them. Oh, let's shout and claim it right now. Come on, somebody say, I want to walk in revelation. Well, I'm glad I'm not hooked up to that thing and it's monitoring my heart right now. I heard about a guy that had a Pentecostal preacher had one of those on him and he wore it while he was preaching. When he got back, the, the doctor said, I want to know what happens to you every Sunday morning. <laughs> At about 11 o'clock. I want to know what happens to you every Wednesday. She said, it's just like clockwork. Every Wednesday around 7, 30, quarter to 8, that heart starts beating faster and faster. She said, I, I looked at it. I looked on the calendar every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, every Wednesday night. He said, I'm a Pentecostal preacher. Yeah. It'll make your heart rate go up. Revelation. Look at somebody and say, God's going to give you a revelation. Ephesians 1 and 17, that God may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Revelation is a spirit. It's not looking around and saying, I feel like I think because of the way she walked. I feel like probably her left leg. <laughs> Let me tell you what the Bible said about that. The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. So you don't look around and go, she's going to heaven, he's going to hell. <laughs> it is amazing how Pentecostal people can look around at the door and a stranger walks in, oh, they're going to hell. Amen. What if God just filled them with the Holy Ghost? Come on. Come on. What if they just repented? What if salvation is line by line and precept by precept and here a little and there a little? What if that's what the second birth is about? It's not just a bundle of wax you get like that, but it's line by line, precept by precept, here a little, there a little. Is anybody ready for a little bit more of salvation? How many wants more of what God's got? You can't get it in one ball of wax. We don't need know-it-alls to come into church. Most people that think they're know-it-alls have already forgotten most of it. That was supposed to be funny. It, revelation is an insight into mysteries. Mysteries. It, isn't it amazing how God can take a sinful, darkened heart Wash it in red blood. You still believe in the blood? You still believe the blood's got anything to do with your salvation? He can take an old blackened heart, wash it in red blood, and make you white as snow. I'm talking about your heart. That's a, that's a mystery. like a black cow or red cow or a polka dotted cow eating green grass 
given white milk. It's a mystery. There's some mysteries in the church. I see them all the time. How people all around shouting and others are pouting. Is this microphone working? How some people are going, I'm blessed of the Lord. Took what you got outside and laid it in the street and see what's waiting for you. Oh, there's so much more waiting for you. A revelation. Everybody say a revelation. If you had a revelation of what God really looks like. I've heard people write books that they saw God. My Bible don't say that. I, I, I don't care who said they saw God. I don't care they got 18 sets of ordinary. Saw a little, God might have lifted a corner of the veil, but you have never saw him face to face. When you do, your knees are going to go together. Your natural body cannot take it. That's why you got a glorified body waiting for you. you got to get in the spirit because those that worship God must worship him in spirit. Somebody say revelation. revelation. Insight into mysteries. I cannot think, and I've preached to the east and the west, the north and the south, as far as you can go in this country and out of this country. And I don't think there's another man more qualified than your pastor to preach to you about the mysteries of God. If you believe that, give him a good hand clap. If it's not evangelistic, it doesn't mean it's not deep. Deep waters go slow sometimes. Job was able to say, I've been looking for God. I look to the left, can't see God. Look to the right, can't see God. Looked in front of me. God looked behind me couldn't find God but then he said I want to say this I know if I don't see him I know if I don't feel him I know I want you to get this one more time what you know is greater than any feeling you can ever have hit this mortal body I'm not taking anything away from Pentecostal chill bumps, but there is nothing like the word that is hid in your heart and what you know about God. What you know is greater than any feeling you can ever have. Because feelings come and feelings go, but the word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Would you shout in this building tonight? Say it, I know who he is. Come on, I know who he is. God said, I would not have you to be ignorant drunks, drug addicts. I would not have you to be ignorant who? Brethren. Wouldn't talk into the Senate. Talk into the church. Somebody asked you tonight, how do you get saved? And you go, I don't know. Here's my pastor phone number. And when you get in church, you should know how to get drunk on the Holy Ghost. We don't need a Pharisee spirit trying to pastor the church. Let the pastor be the pastor. God be God. You be a listener and then you become a doer. But you don't have any right to do until you listen. 
But as soon as you listen, get ready to mount up with wings like an eagle. You're going to start being a doer after you've been a good listener. Well, I just feel like, Brother Grimsley, maybe I was called to help the pastor be the pastor. I kind of doubt it. Man. When I was in the world, I didn't need anybody to help me drink anything or smoke anything. I didn't need any help with my bad, nasty mouth. And now that I'm a Christian, I'm going to praise him if you don't. As a matter of fact, quietness around me makes me want to scream out, I love you, Jesus. Give me one more revelation of your hair white as wool. Give me one more revelation that a sharp sword's coming out of your mouth. Give me one more revelation of who you are. The Bible declares that Christ revealed secrets to his servants. Think about that. God can whisper something about somebody to one of his servants. A servant doesn't mind picking up a chair in the church and moving it here or there. Servant doesn't mind cleaning up the restroom. See, there was a time in church because we'd done it because we're a servant. Now we do things because we get paid for it. What saints used to do freely, now it's, didn't sister so-and-so get some money for doing that? If you get your reward here, what is your reward there? But how many has got a reward waiting for you? Are you glad to be a servant willingly? Jesus was a servant. Had what I preached once called the power of the towel. Yeah, I preached that once. He got up from eating, they got up from eating, and he got the towel and washed his feet. He was a servant. But somebody said, No, you're not going to wash my feet. And Jesus changed his mind. If you think your wife can change your mind, you wait till God changes your mind. He said, well, if I don't get to wash your feet, you don't have. He said, hey, go ahead and wash my whole body. The power of the towel is the ability to be a servant without any recognition. We're going to be recognized. Your pastor is going to be recognized for his power of the towel. You've seen him as a servant, haven't you? I'd like for you to go down and symbolically brush his shoes off. Go down, get on your knees and brush his shoes off. Could I get just one? Don't all of you get up. Just one more man. First one that gets down here is the only one. Anybody? There, there he is right there. You. That's it. That's the power of the towel. Now you tell me who feels the most humility. The man down there washing his feet or the man whose feet's being washed. Oh, hold your hands up and say, give me the spirit of a servant. Come on, give me revelation, God, that regardless of how powerful my ministry is, I'm still nothing but a glorified servant. There is no great anointed men. There's great anointing. It's 
not about the man. It's about the God of the anointing. Come on and praise Him and worship Him tonight. The Bible is a book of spiritual revelations. There are gifts like the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge. Men that try to work in the gift of knowledge are dead wrong when they do that all by itself. There are three gifts that must always, always work together. The gift of faith. The gift of knowledge is to know what is not common knowledge. But the gift of wisdom is to know what to do with what you know. Because if we don't know what to do with what we know, we're going to run people off instead of planning them. I got a feeling next year there's going to be more planning people in this church. Because wisdom is going to flow in this church. And when wisdom works hand in hand with faith and knowledge, people are going to stay, not stray. Get ready for God to uncover things that have been hidden. November the 11th of next year, we get to live and make it. We, of course, we may all be in heaven by then. I remember that will have been 50 years ago. I turned around in a little church nobody had ever been married in, and nobody ever got married in it after that. Sister Grimsley and I was the only people that ever got married in that little crippled, wood frame, falling down church. And though we had, we had been together before for two years before we got married. I will never forget how that felt when they started playing that music and she come walking down the aisle and she had that veil over her face. I want to tell you, there was something that night about lifting that veil. And there was something the night that God lifted his veil. I thought I knew who he was till he raised the veil up. Don't you act like you don't know because you don't know who he is without a revelation. Come on and shout in here. Give me a brand new revelation. God's already spoke to me and said the year 2019, I'm going to raise the veil off of my power. I'm going to raise the veil off of my glory and my people, my common people, not just the ministry, but my church and my people, they're going to have a revelation of my glory. Oh, stand up and say, I want it. Stand up tonight and say, I need it. Stand up tonight and say, I desire a revelation of God's glory. Come on, you're doing good. Speak out loud. Talk to him. Tell him, raise the veil, Holy Ghost. Raise the veil. Come on, travail before the Lord. God is about to lift a corner off the veil and reveal His glory. 2019 in Norfolk, Virginia, God's going to lift the veil. You're going to see beyond the veil. someone and say it. God's about to lift the veil off of His mercy. Off of His grace. God's about to lift the veil off His power. Say it. You're about to see what's beyond the veil. What's been hid is going to be uncovered. Woo! Shabbat randala mohoshai. This anointing isn't just for apostolic ministry. It is for apostolic people. The veil is about to be lifted. The 
deaconship, do you know when God gave me this sermon? When I was down, laying flat on my back, and my heart was beating 90 miles an hour, and demons standing all around my bedroom saying, you'll never preach again. God gave me this sermon. I said, you devil, God wouldn't give it to me if he's not going to let me preach it. Get ready. God's about to say, you think you've seen me? You've seen me through a glass darkly, but you're about to see me face to face. Are you ready for the raising of the veil? God's about to show you why this church has been fought like it has. He's about to show you why people have fallen into sin. He's about to show you why the devil has fought you. God is about to lift the veil off of this church. The mystery is about to be solved. Come on, come on, come on. You're doing the right thing. Come on. I want to hear more of that for a few moments. If you'll just let God move, I'll shut up. Come on. Come on. Woo, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I wish somebody would start saying it over and over. The veil's about to be lifted. I'm going to know why I had this trial. I'm going to know why I had this test. I'm going to know why I had to go through this hell that I've been going through. God's going to raise the veil. I'm going to know why I had to move. I'm going to know why my family's like it is. God's about to raise the veil. Come on, come on. I hear you out there. I hear a hunger. Those that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Come on and get hungry and get fed. Come on and get hungry and get fed. you feel him in this house right now? Do you feel his presence? Does anybody feel like God is lifting the veil? The marriage is about to take place. Somebody shout it. The marriage. The marriage is about to take place. Judas could kiss him, but he couldn't live for him. The raising of the veil is more than just a kiss. It's a revelation of what's behind that veil. How about Rindala Mohusha? For everything that's attacked this church, there's been a reason and a purpose for it. I'm telling you, I feel so led in the Holy Ghost to tell you. If I didn't live for anything else but to come back and tell this church one more time next year, get ready for it. But you better be preparing yourself for the rest of this year for what he's got waiting for you next year. And if you, th if you think that's something, wait till 2020. If the church is still here, wait till the year 2020 when the Pentecostal church has got a perfect vision. We're not going to lose churches. We're going to gain churches. We're going to quit coming to church watching one another. Did she wear that dress last Sunday? Is that the same suit she wore three times? It's not how many times you're wearing, and it's not the price tag on it. It's what does it cover. That's what counts. Well, I'm just here trying to make friends. If you'll remain standing and they'll come to the instruments, I'm not going to preach much longer.
the servant of the man of God woke up early that morning. They had been sleeping. And as they got up, the servant of the man of God got up early, starts walking around and looked. And the mountains are surrounded by the enemy. Isn't it amazing how you can get out of church on a Sunday feeling so good, everything's going great. You can hardly get up Monday morning and all hell breaks loose. And if you don't see it, somebody will run to you and point it out. Come on. I said, if you don't see it, you have somebody will call you. Have you heard? servant is just beside himself, runs to the man of God and goes, oh, alas, what shall we do? Look at the enemy. And he goes something like, you'll find this in the book of Wednesday, chapter 2, verse 8, I believe. It is. <laughs> Shut up. Raise your hand. Slapped his hand on his head and knocked the scales off his eyes. And he said, now look and see what you see. He said, when I looked early this morning, I saw a natural enemy, but now I see a supernatural friend. I mean, he's ready to go beyond your natural enemy and let the scales fall off of your eyes. Are you ready for a Holy Ghost revelation? Not of what's against you, but what's for you. Oh, it's so easy. Cancer runs in the family. I'm probably going to get it. Heart trouble runs in the family. I'm probably going to get it. Of course, I've done outlived all of them are doing. What if we started inheriting what our spiritual family's got instead of what our natural family has? What if our expectancy for the bad and the negative become as great for the positive? I don't know what it is. I know a few years ago it was 50 million babies had been murdered and aborted in America. Now that may be something you're not supposed to talk about here, but too late, I've already done it. I think it's somewhere around 60 or 70 million now. I'm not really sure. And people go around, oh, America's such a wonderful place. It'll, it'll, it'll never get the judgment of God. That's going to be for some countries over here to no, to whom much is given. America is going to be judged. The United Pentecostal Church is going to be judged. What an opportunity we have before us. And I want to know, are we really owning up? Do we really deserve this opportunity that we've been given in America? Because I'm concerned that along with this great opportunity that we've had, financial, physical, spiritual, a president that actually stands up and is behind America. But Brother Grimsley, I don't think he's a Christian. like the driving of disease. <coughs> man, crazy, wild man. But when he pulled up, they were talking about their zeal for God. Do you know what that sinner said? Come get in the chariot with me and see my zeal for God. Sometimes the unsaved can have a zeal yes. for God. Because we're just so busy seeing what we can get out of him that we don't want to give him anything. Anybody get anything out of this? Yeah. I'm about halfway through. I'm going to quit. You're blessed tonight. Amen. How much of a zeal do you have? What would it take? Maybe somebody not shaking your hand. Maybe not somebody smiling at you. Or, oh, you've done a great job. And you get all huffy and puffy and leave. And I want to know one thing now, one more thing. Why would you go fishing 
in God's sea of forgetfulness. And don't tell me that's not in the Bible because I can show you it's there in a different wording, but it's there that God does have a sea and a place where he forgets about your sin. Maybe the people in the church didn't forget about how you used to be. But who cares what you remember? My debt is done for God. But here's what I want to know. If there is a place that God throws sin besides the covering of his blood, if there is a place where he forgets, what are you doing fishing there? Just a new thought that God gave me here a while back. What are you fishing in a hole? Because don't you know that you usually eat what you catch? And why do you want to catch what was destroying somebody else's life? If it was destroying them, it'll destroy you when you eat it. I'll go fishing just about anywhere but that sea. Because, see, I got some stuff in there myself. Would you worship the Lord as they sing for us right now, please? Would you just begin to worship and praise the Lord? It was early one morning, just about the break of day. Jesus touched me and he washed all my sins away. I started running, I started shouting. Oh, 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 oh. you know that. I got the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. It was the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Save me. The Holy Ghost. and unconscious I was very alert with God I saw myself standing up before the Lord and as I did I noticed there was something falling I wouldn't dare tell them they'd have had somebody else to come in and check my mind out but I looked and it was little pieces of chain some of them some of them was about a foot long and some of them was about 18 inches long. But it, it wasn't the kind of change, chain, Pastor Bimbery, like a big chain you pull a truck with. It was like a swing set, like a kid's swing set, little small links in it. And while I'm totally out of it, I said, God, what is that? He said, what you're going through is going to rid you of the last chains that's been holding you back. 
I said, I said when I looked on the ground, I'm not talking about the length of the pieces. I'm talking about the literal size, the, the, the lengths of the chain. I said, why are they say so little? He said, because that's the way chains are. They are so small till you can't feel them. Till they're so heavy, you can't shake them. That's the way people get chained. People, before you know it, they miss one service, they miss another service, and, and, and little pieces of chains wrapping them up, and you can't shake them off. You can't get loose. But I'm, st I'm standing there. I'm actually laying there. But they don't know I'm having the time of my life because God said, I want you to look at what's falling off of you. Because when I bring you back, you're not going to have that mess wrapped around you. You're not going to put up with them chains that people have put on you all them years. I'm not interested in everybody's opinion anymore. I done found out opinions are like armpits. Everybody's got them and most of them stink. You start asking everybody's opinion, how do I live for God? You'll get one idea over here and one thing over there, one, but there's only one truth. I must have come to the wrong church. I, I would have expected better out of people that know what the truth is. Dress like you are what you say you are. Act like you are what you say you are. Because we got some people that are Pentecost, and we got some that are plenty crossed. Which one are you? If you want God to reveal himself more in the next few coming days, weeks, and months. Hold your hands up and get ready to receive. I believe that God is so great in this building that a gift of revelation is going to come upon you. You're going to quit looking at things you shouldn't be looking at. You're going to hear the Holy Ghost whisper to you and say, this is a revelation. Don't be watching that mess anymore. I know, I know our preachers are not preaching that anymore, but here it is one more time. God, give us tonight revelation. Revelation that will carry us on into a new year. Revelation, Lord, that will prepare us to see and understand the mysteries of God. Why did that person fail? Why did that person quit the church? Why did that person allow sin to come into their life? God will whisper revelation to you. He said, I'll reveal secrets to my servants with your hands up in the air saying, I am your servant. Give me the mysteries of God. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, come on, come on, come on. Listen, listen, listen. God said to me when I was in the assemblies of God, he said, I'm going to move you from a people that fear you to a people that respect you. I don't know how many they are, but I know there are people that respect me. I received so many phone calls from so many preachers, so many people while I was going through this. I found out that there are people that respect this ministry. I found it out. But here's what I'm concerned about. If we're not careful... 
we're going to allow to come into our churches and our midst the very things that I left. More and more. Why is it happening? See, I, I'm not one of those preachers that are afraid to talk about other preachers. I'm just going to say the difference between me and them is they get it. I get on the microphone and talk about it. <laughs> they just allow more and more things to come into their service. Of course, if you get less and less of anointing and less and less of the Holy Ghost, you're going to have to have something stupid right. to take a place. Right. 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 Yeah. Because everything outside of the Holy Ghost is stupid stuff anyway. Amen. When you lose that power and demonstration. See, I remember what it was like. What, Sister Grimsley, was it 30 or 33 years ago? How long? 33? Came out in 1988, however many years that is. And I wish you could have seen what I seen 30 years ago and what has happened in 30 years. It's just a line by line, precept by precept. And if we're not careful, we're going to lose the richest thing that any people have ever had. Hold on to it like you've never held on to it before. Quit wanting a sulfur religion. <laughs> Quit wanting an easier route and appreciate what you have. If I wasn't in the ministry, give the Lord a hand. Not me. Give him a hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If I wasn't in the ministry, I'd be glad to come here and just sit down and listen. It'd be quite a relief sometimes just to sit down and listen. I know of a pastor that's working with a friend of mine. He was pastoring in Pennsylvania. And he said, the last time I was with him, I just want to stop. said, my wife and I have been attacked so much. No, he wasn't weak. No, he wasn't afraid. He was a good man. But he said, I just want a year or two of just sitting down and listening to somebody else. What a blessing it is. Consider it next Sunday when you come. Not a task, but consider it a blessing to come to a Pentecostal church and just sit there and bask in God's glory. And believe that God's going to give you a revelation of what the pastor's preaching. Come on, come on, come on and just worship the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Please do not forget about the veil. The veil is not for you just to have it lifted and kiss God because Judas could kiss him but he could not live for him is that right Bishop so the lifting of the veil is far more than the kiss it's a revelation of what's under that veil and we think but we've only had a glimpse of what God wants to do in this city I, I, I want to tell you Pentecost and truth has been in a battle. But God is about to transition us next year and 2020 also from battle to victory. We're, we're going to quit saying, I want to hear a prophecy. We're, we're, we're not going to ask for another prophecy. What we're going to ask for this new year is the prophecies that's already been given through this church to come to fulfillment. Wouldn't it be great if every prophetic word of every missionary, every evangelist, every pastor that's come through this church and prophecies that's been given to you home people right here in this church, if they started being fulfilled. There's a time, there's a word. Then there's a time, a fulfillment of that word. Is that right? How many believes your family and you and your home and your family and this church are about to walk into a time of divine fulfillment? Oh, come on, shout it and claim it with me. Come on and claim it with me right now. I'm about to enter into a season 
a fulfillment. Say it. The chains are falling off. Come on, somebody join me and say, Jesus, if you've done it for Brother Grimsley, do it for me. Cut the chains off of me. Cut the chains off of me. Cut the chains off of me. Whatever my carnal chains still are, cut them off of my spirit. Glory to God. 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 Somebody close your eyes, reach up, and pull the veil off of God. Come on. Come on right now. This is about you. It's about you as an individual. Lift the veil off of God. Come on. See Him as He is. Come on. Come on. Come on. Don't see Him as a God of the past. See Him as a now God. Don't see Him as a used to be God. See Him as a now God. Everybody look this way. Do this. Get both hands. Pull the veil up and say, there he is. He's in my home. He's in my family. He's in my life. Somebody shouted, behold the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. You have witnessed in the past few years Satan's attack on this church. You are about to witness the lifting of the veil. Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah. The marriage is about to take place. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. The marriage is about to take place. The bride is about to march down the aisle. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Around 45 years ago, pastor walked up to me and said had a dream about you last night brother Grimsley I didn't have a gray hair in my head when he said that 45 years ago and no I don't put coloring in my hair so don't talk about that nature's coloring it he said I dreamed that you had gray hair coming up on the side of your hair and I dreamed that you had a striped pin striped suit on I didn't have no gray hair, and I didn't have no pinstripe suit then. But He said, and when you did, he said, an angel came and got you by the hand. He said, I saw him when he took you up to heaven, and, he, and he, he took you down this long, long table. He said, it looked like it was miles long. And said, he got down, and then your new name was written on a, on a golden plaque. And said that angel pulled that chair out and set you down. And you were sitting down at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Oh, church, get ready. I said, get ready. My hair's turning gray. I got a pinstripe suit. I don't believe it's because of that. But I believe he's coming after the church. He's not coming after a church trying to live for God. He's coming after a church that's living for God. Where's the young man that said he wanted to be an evangelist that said that to me this morning? There are two types of people out in the field. In the Bible, there were two types of people. There was the group that was just watching, looking for God to have some fault. Then there was the group that was with God that was actually doing something. There's two groups in the field. They're the ones that are doing something. Then there are those that are talking about us that are doing something. Find 
find fault with God and his followers, how they eat corn, you can find fault with anything. They were just, they were actually hid in the field. They weren't out there to receive anything from God. They were out there to find fault with God. So she don't hit that note just right, or he don't hit that note just right. Amen. 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 to come here again but it's all right i want to say it one more time get rid of some of that music that does no not some of it if it don't glorify god get rid of all of it Girls running your house, you don't have much of a house. I said, the third one from the top, the guides are broken, and that drawer just flops up and down. She just fell out on the floor. Had a few chains get on us, and they start off so light you don't notice them because they're so heavy you can't break them. If you feel like maybe it could be possible, I told this one time and somebody said, Brother Grimsley, I, I can't imagine you'd have any chains. But God did. Would you like from the break off of you right now? Would you like would you like God just to move with the sword of his spirit? I, I believe right now that God could take care in a moment's time of what a psychologist could not take care of years of counseling in your life. Right now, in the name of the Lord, cut the chains off of these people. Cut the chains that are on their mind, on their hearts and their lives. Chains of the flesh. Cut them off. Cut them off. Let them fall off of them. Oh, say, say a little something about change. You know anything about change? Worship God while they're singing. Come on. My chains are falling off. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is cutting my chains off. Come on, don't quit. They're about to sing. Come on, a little bit more. Come on. Come on, come on. Yes. Reach over and touch somebody. Tell them, chains are coming off of you. Bondage is falling off of you. You're not just going to feel better tonight. You're going to feel better and stay better. God's going to get His torch out and cut the chains off of you. The fire of Pentecost is going to free you from chains of bondage. Help me sing, no more shackles, say. Yeah. No more shackles, no. 